If you've been paying attention to the news at all, you know the headlines have been dominated by America's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. A string of embarrassing and tragic errors that have now culminated in the bombing of the Kabul airport where the majority of the evacuation is taking place, resulting in the death of at least 13 service members. This is not going to be a video where I rehash the foreign policy mistakes or the military strategy and policy that was applied to the Afghanistan occupation. There are plenty of good channels in our sphere like the Prudentialist or Semagog that you should check out if you'd like to see more of that. What I'd like to do is talk about how these events can help to expand on an idea that has been stuck in my head ever since my friend the Distributist mentioned it in one of his streams. On the stream, if my memory serves correctly, the Distributist was asked about the flaws he saw in the ideas of Curtis Yarvin. Moldbug is somebody who both I and the Distributist respect a lot, but I think the Distributist brought up a really powerful point about the way that Yarvin attempts to solve problems. He said that the problem with Yarvin is that he's attempting to apply merchant class solutions to our priest and warrior classes. Yarvin is at heart a computer programmer, a tech entrepreneur. All the successful organizations, all the successful leadership that he has seen has been from the merchant class. And to be fair, in general, in our society, the merchant class has been put in charge of almost everything. And so where else would you see success? What other types of solutions would you even have contemporary examples of? While Yarvin definitely falls prey to this error in reasoning, I think this error can actually be applied to almost our entire society. This is how almost everyone in the modern Western world thinks. And the recent events in Afghanistan give us a very clear picture, a very good example of how the blanket application of merchant class solutions to every problem facing our nation and our wider civilization has disastrous results. In the modern Western world, we have slowly but steadily been deterritorializing everything out of the realm of the sacred and re-territorializing it into the realm of the market, moving every aspect of life into the economic sphere and commodifying it. And the reason for this is pretty simple. When we move things into the economic sphere, it becomes much easier to quantify them, to place them on a spreadsheet. You see, the promise of the modern world would be that technocracy would be the universal solution. No more massive wars that threaten to wipe out people. No more inquisitions or crusades. Just a series of well-thought-out, highly-engineered, unobtrusive nudges guiding us to perfection. And who could really argue with the results? Placing statistics at the front, crunching those numbers, prioritizing efficiency, it all seemed to yield limitless returns in almost every field, from baseball to business to the social sciences. And while some of us have suspected for a long time that there would be a cost for all of this, that there would be a limit to its benefits, especially in the spiritual realm, events in Afghanistan stand as an undeniable example of the failure of applying merchant class solutions to warrior class problems. For decades now, our generals have been encouraged to think more like CEOs or academics than people who lead men into battle. Even a decade ago, the men who were supposed to command our military sounded like they would be more at home giving a TED Talk about synergy than actually leading troops. And as wokeness has filtered down from academia to every corner of our society, the armed forces have proven to be just as susceptible, if not downright welcoming, as any major corporation to this ideology. This wasn't supposed to happen. In fact, many conservatives said that this was downright impossible. These ideas were supposed to be a fad that college students would abandon as they moved into the real world, as they had contact with real-life problems. 
if they infected anything, it would be the soft sciences or the entertainment industry. It definitely would not interfere with the work of rough and ready men, serious people charged with doing difficult tasks in defense of our nation. But it has happened, and every general now sees himself as a hybrid between a scholar and a CEO, much more likely to serve as a woke commissar than someone who would push back against this nonsense in protection of the duties that the military is supposed to carry out. This is the formula that is rewarded at the top. These are the people who get promoted to advanced positions of leadership. And as a result, the armed forces are just as vulnerable to this fashion that is sweeping through both the academic and business communities. Which is why the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, spent all of his time boasting about reading Mao and complaining about white rage while being shocked to discover that a Taliban that was supposed to take months or years to recapture Afghanistan after we left was able to do so in only a matter of days. Why only hours before the bombing that killed 13 servicemen at the airport, the sergeant major of the army was tweeting about how diversity was our strength and celebrating Women's Equality Day. For the leadership of America, both civilian and military, Afghanistan was a war of publicity and grift from the beginning, led by a group of generals who would feel more at home in the boardroom than on the battlefield. And this is not to take away from anybody who served there, anyone who fought bravely. I have so many friends who spent large chunks of their lives there, who paid serious costs in Afghanistan. They are easily some of the best and bravest people I know, and what makes me so furious about this are the craven leaders who are clearly willing to put them in harm's way without a second thought, without even a semblance of a plan for victory. This conflict was engineered from the beginning based on how it would be presented in the media and how it would look on a spreadsheet, which is how the most advanced military in human history was driven out by a bunch of goat herders. Because wars aren't won by statistics or algorithms, those things can aid for a while. They can become incredibly useful tools, but when they are all that your generals see, when they are all that your leadership cares about, when they are the only metric of success and failure, you will inevitably see the disastrous results. Until we learn that merchant class solutions are not a panacea that can be applied across every domain of life, we are destined to see ever greater and more costly failure. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you would like to follow me on Twitter or support my work on Subscribestar, like the fine people who are currently being displayed on screen, you can do so by following the links below the video. That's also where you'll find the links for my merch store and my alt tech channels on things like Rumble and Odyssey. Please make sure to go there and subscribe as well. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.